In this video, I'll be building a very powerful air cannon using a custom valve called a barrel sealing piston valve. In air cannons, there are two primary factors for how powerful the cannon will be, the pressure in the chamber and how quickly the firing valve opens. A piston valve is very fast, so this cannon can do impressive things even at low pressure. The greatest task in building my cannon was to assemble the custom valve. Primarily I am using PVC pipe and fittings for this project. Every PVC component must be marked NSF-PW, which indicates the pipe or fitting is rated for pressurized applications. If a fitting is not marked NSF-PW, it is not safe to use for this sort of project. The first pieces that go together are a 2-inch T-fitting, a 4-inch long section of 2-inch diameter pipe, and a 2-inch female threaded adapter. To make a strong bond between the pipe and fittings, I first apply a coat of PVC primer, and then also a generous amount of PVC cement to both surfaces where they will be in contact. The cement dries fast, so immediately after it's been applied, the two pieces must be pressed firmly together. In my previous video, I showed how to make pistons that make an airtight seal in 2-inch PVC pipe, and in this project I'll be putting one to use. My piston fits perfectly pressed into the section of 2-inch pipe, separating the threaded adapter and T-fitting. Opposite the piston, I need to insert a reducer into the T to fit a 1.5-inch diameter pipe, but for this valve design I need the pipe to actually extend past the reducer and into the center of the T-fitting. My 1.5 inch reducer has a shoulder built on the inside that prevents the pipe from being pressed in too far, and so I'll need to remove it. The easiest way I've found to remove the shoulder on fittings like this is to use a drum sander attachment for a drill. Mine cost about $10 at a hardware store. With the shoulder removed, a section of 1.5 inch PVC pipe can pass straight through the fitting. Problem solved. Now I need to make a measurement from the center of the T-fitting to where my newly modified adapter will come to rest inside. This is the length I need to know in order to measure how far my 1.5 inch pipe should extend past the adapter. I can't really put primer and glue on the inside of the fitting or it would make a mess as I moved it into place, so instead only the pipe is coated where the fitting will go. This is not an ideal solution, but I've done it many times without issue. We can now see how the pipe will sit in the T-fitting, but before it's attached permanently, it needs a rubber seal so that no air can leak by when the piston is pressed against it. I'm using a rubber coupling which is made to slip over the outside of 1.5 inch pipe. The one I found has a metal sleeve on the outside which is easily removed. The rubber coupling was then trimmed down almost all the way to the center divider, but still leaving a short lip all the way around. This will help it make a seal. This fits over my 1.5 inch pipe, and my piston will now be able to seal perfectly against it. Just to make sure the rubber coupling never comes off the pipe, I roughed up the outside with sandpaper, then reinstalled the coupling, peeling it back to drip superglue between it and the sanded plastic surface. Superglue is about the only adhesive that will hold these two materials together. Finally, the whole section can be installed into the T-fitting, being very careful not to touch the rubber seal to the wet cement inside the fitting as the reducer is glued in place. At this point, the piston needs to be removed for one last modification. In front of the O-ring, but not so close to the front that it would interfere with the rubber seal, a hole is drilled through the side with about the smallest drill bit I could find. The smaller the better. This tiny hole is what will allow air to fill the pressure chamber in the cannon but if it's too large, it will actually hurt performance. The modified piston can now be pressed back in the fitting, and to keep it there I'll be using a 2 inch by 1 inch threaded reducer. The piston will actually be moving backward and forward with a good deal of force as the cannon fires, so the threaded fitting needs a rubber bumper to absorb the impact. I used a section of 2 inch pipe to mark the size of a ring to be cut out of sheet rubber, which will serve this purpose. With a second hole cut through the middle of the rubber, it's super glued to the inside of the threaded fitting. Before the piston becomes inaccessible, it's good to pour in some light oil to make sure it can slide easily in the pipe. And the threaded fitting can now be installed, using some Teflon tape to make sure the threads are airtight. The reason I used this particular reducer is so I could attach this firing assembly which is built with a 1 inch ball valve and a brass fill valve and pressure gauge threaded through the wall of a Schedule 80 PVC pipe nipple. 
Using this assembly, I can fill the cannon with the brass fill valve, also known as a tank or Schrader valve. I can read the pressure with the gauge, and the ball valve is my trigger. This assembly threads into the reducer behind the piston, and all the working parts of this barrel sealing piston valve are complete. All that's left is to attach a threaded coupling to the third opening of the T, so that in a moment I'll be able to thread on a pressure chamber. And a second threaded coupling is glued to the end of the valve's output, so I can attach a longer barrel. Now this is what happens when I connect a pressurized air supply to the fill valve behind the piston. The piston moves forward, sealing against the barrel. Once a chamber is attached, the small hole drilled through the side of the piston will allow air to leak in and build pressure. Finally, when the ball valve at the back of the cannon is opened, pressure drops behind the piston, causing it to move backwards. This breaks the seal against the barrel, and all the air blasts out at the same time. I decided to make the chamber of this cannon quite simplistic. It's just a threaded elbow fitting, a length of 2 inch pipe, and an end cap. Once again, it's all pressure rated, marked NSF-PW. The barrel is a two foot long section of one and a half inch pipe with a male adapter at the end meant to thread into the output fitting of the piston valve. And the cannon is finished. Let's give it a try. All right, we're gonna try just firing a regular ping pong ball at about 60 PSI. All right, 65 PSI, ping pong ball down the barrel. All right, let's give it a try. Okay. <laughs> oh, all right. I got another one. Just takes a few seconds to fill. I'm done with that. Ready to go. Three, two, one. <laughs> yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> We've got shot one and shot two. <laughs> Even a ping pong ball, which you usually wouldn't think of as a very harmful projectile, can do quite a lot of damage. After a few shots, I realized that I really didn't like the ball valve that I selected to fire this cannon. It works fine, but it sticks in the off position and is hard to open. So I replaced it with a modified sprinkler valve. This will allow me to fire much more easily with this squeeze of a trigger. Theoretically, this should also make the cannon more powerful, but I didn't notice much of a difference. The ball valve alone made the cannon impressive enough in terms of performance. Of course, I can also fire potatoes out of this cannon, and to get an airtight seal, I use a piece of sharpened pipe to cut them into shape. Thank you to my Patreon supporters who have helped me keep making videos even when YouTube ads fail to pay for these projects. If you're not a Patreon supporter, please check out my page and contribute if you can. If not, then thank you for watching anyway. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.